you know, when you choose to become a man of God, or when God calls you to become a man of God, whichever way, because some people choose to uh, to become men of God, while some people are called to become men of God, right? When you step into that office, when you take over that responsibility, it is important for you to know that uh, there are expectations on you that is not normal with people who are not called into that office. Every office has certain expectations. Every office has the things you can do and things you cannot do. That's just the way that it is. And when you especially step into a moral office, office that depicts morality, that is the custodian or the builder of the moral fiber of society, then you have to be awake and you have to stay awake. That is very important. So whether you are a pastor, I'm not going to drop the bar down for you and say, well, everybody does it because you are, you are behaving in certain ways or you are doing certain things, certain things and sins. I'm, if whether you are a prophet, I'm not going to expect you to be the same as somebody who is still growing in the Lord or who's just a leader. No, you are leading people. So there are certain examples that you should set. That's why God set up a standard and a guideline. In first, first Corinthians, it was very clear, talking about the expectations of the op office of a bishop, talking about the attributes of a bishop, the behavior of a bishop, how the, a bishop should show the fruit of the spirit, how a bishop should conduct himself, how a bishop should be a husband of one wife. That's very important. And we're not going to drop the bar. It's not because it's us. When you as a church member drop the bar and justify the sexual sin of your pastor or justify his financial sin, when you drop the bar, you are actually mocking God. You are actually mocking the Bible. That's what you're doing. You are discarding the standard of God and bringing in your standard, the standard of man. Just because you love your pastor or you want to defend them, we are tired of doing that, guys. We are tired of doing that over and over and over again. And I'm going to share with you an audio that I received last week, I think last week, Friday or so, and I didn't get the time to really to really do a broadcast on it, you know, uh, but now I'm, I, I feel I should do the broadcast on it. I received, I received this audio last week, Friday, from about two people, a conversation between Bishop Israel Makamu of Endless Hope Ministries and an unknown young girl. I received it since last week. I get quite a lot of such messages. And that's what we're going to be looking at. Right? For those of you who are international guys, we have quite a lot of international guys here. This is Bishop Israel Makamu. He is a sort of like a middle-aged type young pastor uh, based in the east of Johannesburg, South Africa. He's, he's, he creates and, and does a lot of like what he called revival around different towns, especially and cities, mostly towns in South Africa. And he goes around, you know, doing that. Uh, so, but he became quite a bit popular, uh, in the last, uh, two, three years because he had, he has very, uh, popular programs on, uh, Moja Love TV, which is a TV channel on DSTV uh, around here in South Africa, right? Now, this is him. He obviously lives a very flamboyant life. You see him flaunting expensive cars. You know, he loved that kind of life. So he is that kind of person. You know, he runs a couple of businesses. Uh, one of his business that has been really doing well lately is the business of a funeral parlor. 
So where they, you know, because in South Africa is quite, you know, burying people is quite a celebration. It's not just, you know, there's quite a lot. Of it. So it's big business, you know, and people put in money. People go into debt because they want to bury their loved ones. You know, they go borrow money. So he's into that business and he's, he's been doing quite well recently, actually. Uh, this is him again. You can see the kind of cars that he, you know, he drives. Uh, and a lot of people across the country have, you know, got to know him and got to love him and got to see him in, in different perspective. And one thing with him is he is also a married person. So we're talking about somebody who's married. He has a wife and this is him and his wife while she was pregnant a couple of years, I think two, three years ago. And they do ministry together. They run the church together. She's very much involved in the church. She's very much involved in the church and she does quite a lot of stuff in the church also. So we're talking about uh, uh, definitely somebody that around South Africa and maybe Lesotho, Botswana, they know him very well. You know, he's originally from Pomalanga, right? He's originally from Pomalanga, MP, but he's based here. So the audio that I'm going to play to you uh, is in Sutu, Sisutu. Uh, some of you guys know Sisutu. Some of you guys do not know Sisutu. So for the benefit of those who don't understand the language of Sisutu, like me, <laughs> I want you to please, uh, the Sisutu speaking, or if you understand Sisutu, please, just when you listen to the audio, can you please type in the comment section what is being said? You know, now... I am going to try to summarize it afterwards. But this is an alleged audio between Bishop Israel Makamu and an unknown girl. A conversation over a minute that got to like, hey, I sort of like want to come over and sleep with you. Can I come over? I know. You can come now. Uh, maybe you can come after uh, after church on Sunday. All those kind of stuff, right? Now, is this the voice of Israel Makamu? A lot of people say this. People that know him very well say this. So I'm going to play you that audio just so you can listen to it. So please listen to the audio and listen to this man. Uh, talking to uh, this girl.
There you go. I'm sure, I hope that uh, people listening have been uh, commenting around it. Yeah. People say this is definitely the voice of Bishop Israel Makamu, the very popular TV presenter, runs a church. Please, somebody is saying here, can somebody, uh, someone in the UK here who doesn't understand Sesutu, Sesutu please can uh, can some kind person translate? Thanks. Can somebody please translate? While somebody is uh, trying to translate, let me play it again one last time in case you miss it. There you go. Uh, the fact that she's calling him daddy, you would know that definitely uh, she's somebody that is maybe in the church or she sees him as a spiritual father uh, because, I mean, she said daddy how many times, you know, close to like six times, five, six times or so. Uh, but let's see what Boy Tumelo, how she summarized it. She said in a nutshell, he's basically telling her he just dropped off Siabonga and telling her he is in the area and checks if no one will see him, asking her if she is alone and basically asking her for sex and continuously so. He basically says she's boring because she wouldn't sleep with him. So there you go. That's what uh, a summary, some sort of a summary of it. Uh, and quite a lot of you guys are also summarizing it there, uh, which is... Uh, uh, Lerato said it in a different way. He wanted to have a quickie. The girl said Sunday as they have, as they agreed. Okay. So is this the voice of Bishop Israel Makamu? That's a big question. You know, because it sounds like his voice to me, but is that his voice? Uh, you know, uh, it's it's something that you we, you have to look at and you have to ask questions around. But at the same time, even if we put him aside and we talk generally just about some of the 
lifestyle choices of bishops, of prophets, of pastors. It has become very sad the way that they conduct their lives, the way that they have relationships, though they are married and they have children, but they have relationship with other girls, especially the vulnerable girls in the church, who they know. You know, it was Bishop Zondo that said, look, I don't have any relationship with any girl in the church. If I want sex, if I want free sex, I will just go and pay for it. That's the coming from a bishop, right? What does that tell you about that sort of bishop? Now, the Bible is very clear uh, in the book of Proverbs where it says, be faithful to your own wife and give your love to her only. Give your love to her alone. So if you, have, if you sleep with another woman, you're trying to give your love to another woman. You're certainly trying to receive love from another woman. But in a husband-wife situation, there's a faithfulness that is required where you are faithful with your love to your wife and your wife is faithful with her love to you. That's the standard. That's not even the standard for pastors and bishops and prophets and, and apostles. No, it's the standard for all of us. It's the standard for all of us. And the moment we begin to compromise these standards, you know, for me, even the way that I'm not against people living flamboyantly or having a good life or having cars or whatever. But the moment you begin to see a pastor posting pictures like this on social media, to be honest with you, I put a question mark around a pastor or a bishop or a prophet. The moment you begin to see a pastor or bishop or prophetess, you know, posting their photos with their cars or posting them in their photos in the big house or there is there is a problem there it shows me i leaves me with a question mark asking myself where is their heart really where is their heart and it seems like you want attention if you post that kind of photos you want attention who do you want attention from the only person that we should seek attention from is god but if you begin to post pictures of you living large, eating in a, in a great restaurant, you know, in front of your car, different cars every day, all your photos is like you are well made up and, and you dress really nicely. And I'm not against that again. But what is in your heart? What are you do? Why are you doing that? I know a lot of pastors and bishops and apostles who do that because they want to attract younger girls. And they're married. They want to attract younger girls. Some of them want to attract people generally so they can come to their church because, wow, God has blessed the pastor. So for some reason, God is also going to bless me if I go to that church. Question marks. We need to put question marks there. Is this apostle, is this Bishop Makamu? You be the judge. The voice sounds like him. And to be honest with you, I had received, for the last two years, I had received about three or four different girls coming to me, girls and people, and, and I think with men also, coming to me with allegations against this Bishop Makamo. But I never really had anything on him. I never, I mean, you have to get evidence. So when, I, when this was sent to me last week, I said, okay, let's look at it. Is that him? I don't know him. I've never met him before. I see him on TV. I listen to his voice and I listen to this. And it's like, ah, this sounds like him, but I'm not even sure if it's him, you know, but you guys know because you guys watch his program a lot on TV. Some of you guys know him. Some of you guys have been to his meetings because he does revival across South Africa in, in small towns. He runs a very lucrative and uh, profitable funeral business. We need to be faithful. You and I need to be faithful. You do not have to be a bishop or apostle or pastor to be faithful. 
wherever you, where you are, you need to be faithful. Are you faithful to your boyfriend? Are you faithful to your girlfriend? Or you're double dating, or you have side chick. You have another girlfriend. You are dating two or three of them. Are you faithful to your boyfriend, to your girlfriend? Are you faithful to your boyfriend? Are you faithful to your husband? Even if you are, you have a girlfriend, faithfulness doesn't mean you don't have another, another girlfriend or you don't have a side chick. No. Faithfulness as a Christian means I have a girlfriend. We are not married, so I'm not going to sleep with her. That's faithfulness. Can I say that again? Faithfulness for single people starts from you have a girlfriend. So faithfulness doesn't just mean, okay, I have one girlfriend. I don't have a side chick or a second girlfriend. So I'm faithful to my girlfriend. No, but you are, you are sleeping with her. That means you're not faithful to her. She's not faithful to you either. Faithfulness means we are going to observe sexual purity. For married people, faithfulness means she's the only one I'm going to sleep with. He's the only one that I'm going to sleep with. That's faithfulness. So we need to return to that level of faithfulness again. We need to. Whether you are a leader, whether you're not a leader. We need to hold each other accountable. We need to hold each other to that standard in Proverbs 5 that God has created for us. That is very important. I'm trying to check out... Uh, <laughs> people always say that, right? Somebody is saying, uh, I don't know if he's talking to me. Say, so, Wena, are you clean? <laughs> Lucy, I don't know if you're talking to me. I'm clean if you're talking to me. But if you're not talking to me well, uh, the people need to answer for themselves. Uh, somebody here is saying, this is character assassination. It shows that it's not the first time her daddy asked for whatever he's asking. If the lady had good intentions, why make the public... Why make the issue on public uh, social media? Chances are the lady set a trap for the pastor. The pastor fell for it. Some people are not victims. They are the predators. No, he is not a victim. She is not a predator. How is this character assassination? I don't see how that is. this is character assassination. Maybe he's, if he's not even the girl that released this. Maybe he's not even Makamu. <laughs> Asa, you know. Sianda said, I know that what is done in the dark will come to light. Thanks, Uncle Solomon. Yes, whatever is done in the dark will, come, will surely come to light. It will surely come to light. It will surely come to light. And if he's not Bishop Makamu, I'm sure he's going to come out and say he's not the one. But for me, I'm speaking generally. How do we make sure we are faithful? What can we learn from this? Happiness is saying, are you faithful, Solomon? We're still on earth. Don't expect us to live like we're in heaven. Most men cheat. Pastors are human too. You see the problem when we drop the standard. And happiness may just be a, a girl, a woman saying this. Most men cheat. I don't agree with mo most men cheat. I am faithful. Been married for eight years. Next month is going to be eight years. I've never once flirted with another woman, cheated on my wife. No, and I don't intend to. You have to make that decision. But you think most men cheat and you also want, it. so you're also going to go out and cheat. But you have to make that decision inside of you. It's not a joke. So because most men cheat and you're going to cheat, you think it's not a sin? It's a sin. And that, would, that might stop you from getting into heaven. That's just the way that it is. We need to return to holiness. 
We need to return to holiness. We need to return to the Lord. That is what God expected of us. That's what he expects of us. He expects of me. I'm not going to be talking about a standard that I don't try to keep. I wouldn't be a hypocrite. I might as well not be a Christian than be a hypocrite. I'm not going to try to do that at all because that's not what I intend to be. So, I... Some of you guys are here for the first time watching. Thank you so much for being here on Solomon's Temple. Uh, Andres is saying, Timo is saying something. Why are you checking in the kitchen when you said you never cheated on your wife? I don't get that. Checking in the... My wife is not even home. <laughs> checking in the kitchen. I don't get you. Anyway, bottom line is I never cheated on your wife. Timo, I've seen your comments before and I know you love uh, cheating. Is all is something that is accepted for you. Well, so be it. No one is going to force you not to cheat. But you can't stop us from telling you what the Bible says. Cheating is a sin. Cheating will destroy you, will destroy the other person, and cheating will take you to hell. Simple as that.